but they didn't want the media to report the sham trial. I went there to the camp to report it, and that's what offended them. They arrested me and beat me with gun butts. And I remember him saying, you will never write with that hand again. He used the bayonet to stab. This was split in the middle. 19 years later, I have to regularly peel it off. So I was wondering why would I live in a country like this and be quiet? I decided to walk to a small, into a small newspaper one morning. I said, can I be reporting because I spend a lot of time at the courts and I don't see these things reported. And the editor looked at me and said, well, you know, I don't usually see young people saying that I was 21. I said, whatever, let me just have the chance to have a voice, you know, to say something. Every government journalist was afraid to write. And the publishers of the newspapers were afraid to publish what people like me were writing because they would be killed or arrested. And I said, no, you're going to put me on, you're going to put me in trouble. I decided to start publishing it internationally. Then they declared me, wanted my photos on national TV, announcements on radios. And here I am, a young man, 26, trying to escape from a country that small with checkpoints of thousands of military officers all over the country trying to catch me. A lot of refugees are survivors of torture or have witnessed extreme levels of violence. Like, there is no rape that can be described how bad it is, but you cannot imagine where rape is used as a weapon of war. They come and attack a village, kill all the men, or force them to join their army, and take this woman and hand them to the soldiers. They use the woman, they say, this is your salary for the month. Salary, woman, as a weapon of war. Luckily for me, I was able to flee the country. The American embassy expedited my case and I was resettled as a refugee in Rhode Island. I write op-eds at the Providence Journal. I'm looking at myself here, I'm able to do that. I wasn't even born here, I naturalized in 2012. If I can do that, no Americans will be denied that. I realized that despite being free, despite getting the kind of opportunity to rebuild your life in a new country like America, there were still a lot of challenges, a lot of roadblocks in resettling in a new country, especially for a refugee who were not prepared for their journey. And again, it's just the idea of refugees helping fellow refugees. The fact that we are resettled, we've adjusted, had the opportunity to have a better life in America, we thought it's an opportunity to empower fellow refugees who are recently arriving.